Jackson. Nobody in the history of the league other than Lamar Jackson has thrown for 3,000 yards and ran for 1,000 in a season. You pick up his fifth-year option. That's an easy one. But why isn't there talk about wrapping this guy up into a long-term deal already, considering what I've just said and the success the team has had? Sue, but I think he will. they will once we get through his third season, and I think they will extend his option, controlling him for the 21 and 22 season. The interesting discussion is, how much is he worth? Because this year he struggled in two areas, specifically completion percent and yards per pass attempt. And yards per pass attempt really describes how well he's getting the ball down the field. If I was Baltimore, I'd be a little bit concerned because he struggled in both those areas now in his third season. When you look at players like Deshaun Watson at $30 million, $39 million a year, do you go that high if you're Baltimore? You certainly can't afford to lose them, but that's a really high number. So they have a little bit more time to sort that out. No, they do, Mike. And here's what I would say on a counter argument to that is the market's the market. Despite what his completion percentages and all the numbers look like, the guy's a reigning MVP. He certainly has you winning. He has you in the hunt year in and year out since taking over a year and a half ago. Um, when you look at where he's at in his development and maturity at the quarterback position, wouldn't you say as an ex-general manager that they need to get him a bona fide alpha dog at the receiver position? Yeah, no question about it. And Key, you just made the same argument I made for the year and a half with Dak Prescott, which was I was incredulous that Dallas did not get him signed because as soon as Dak walks out the door, it just gets so much more expensive to replace him. So I think that's a great point. And specifically with Lamar, he needs a number one guy. Look, we know Russell Wilson's a really, really good player. Look at the development of DK Metcalf and look at how much that's impacted already a great player in Wilson. And that's exactly what Lamar needs is he needs a bona fide number one guy outside the numbers that can win consistently. We're seeing it in Arizona with um, DeAndre Hopkins. And I think that's a really important point. And I'm not surprised, Key, that you would be trumpeting the fact that someone would actually need a wide receiver. <laughs> well, well, it does I mean, help. The, the facts are the facts, right? You look at Josh Allen, and you look at what Josh Allen is. They went out and traded Stephon Diggs. You look at what Dak Prescott was prior to Amari Cooper arriving from the Raiders, and then all of a sudden, Dak Prescott became this amazing third-down quarterback. And let me ask you about another quarterback. How come Dwayne Haskins has fallen out of so much favor from the Washington football team? Mm. What, why in such a short period of time? Yeah, Key, I am fascinated, and I can't wait to see Wednesday's practice because presumably if Alex Smith is going to start, how many reps does Dwayne Haskins get? It must be something off the field because earlier in the season, we, ho we heard Coach Rivera talk about Cam Newton and all his development and the bumps in the road he had, but he hung in there with him. So I don't know if somehow... Dwayne Haskins did something to Coach Rivera that really disappointed him because he didn't go from first string to second. He went to third string. So that's something to really keep an eye on now to see how many reps does Haskins get. And if I'm Dwayne Haskins, I look at the last few weeks and say, you know what? I got bench. It stinks, but I learned from it. And now I'm ready to compete for more playing time with Alex Smith. So I think it's a really interesting storyline this week is Washington's Wednesday's practice. Mike, let's go from the NFC East to the AFC East. Josh Allen, it seems like ever since he played in that game uh, against the Patriots, he's really found his rhythm. They took advantage of that secondary for Seattle yesterday. He threw the ball incredibly well. What are your takeaways from the game? Yeah, I thought he played really well. And there's two things that jump out. He outplayed Russell Wilson, and they are clearly the best team in the AFC East. Not only did he control the game throwing it, but he made some really big plays with the run. And when they're at the goal line and they're pulling the guard and they have those direct quarterback runs, that is really, really hard to stop. And I think right now Seattle's Achilles heel is defensively, you know, they've had three players. They added Stax Harrison, they traded for Carlos Dunlap, and they also traded earlier for Jamal Adams, and their defense really looks porous. So uh, Buffalo, to me, is in firm control of the AFC East, which is something we haven't been able to say in over two decades. But Josh Allen had a couple of uh, poor weeks, but, boy, yesterday he played flawlessly. All guests join us on the Shell Pinzoil Performance Line. Mike, now let's stay in the AFC East, and it seems like it never is a week that goes by when you're on our show we're not talking about this particular quarterback in Sam Darnold. How valuable would it be for Sam Darnold in a trade? What's that value? 
Well, it depends. Is the other GM from USC or not? I mean, we, we know the premium that you guys put on, you know, y y the loyalty Stop. you guys have. So, um, but uh, in all seriousness, you know what's disappointing is tonight, presumably, the Jets will have Denzel Mims, Jamison Crowder, and Perryman for the first time. Wouldn't you love to see Sam Darnold with those weapons to see what he can do? And that's why I think when you look at what happened with Josh Rosen when he went from Arizona to Miami a year ago for a second round pick, I think that's about the compensation, which is, you know, he, he has fallen quite a bit. But you would just say, what can you look at in the NFL that he's put together in consecutive weeks where he's played at a really high level. We just talked about Josh Allen's development, Lamar Jackson's won an MVP, and Sam Darnold just hasn't done it. Now with that said, he's young, he's high character, he's immensely talented, so there's so many teams that will need quarterbacks. I think a second round pick will be fair. Let me ask you this question though, Mike, as a former general manager and having to have gone into these situations on the what if. What if you trade Sam Darnold for a two and let's say he goes to Pittsburgh, for instance, and Ben retires in a year, and then all of a sudden Sam Darnold looks like the second coming, how much pressure would that be on you as a general manager? Yeah, that's something you really don't want to have happen is you got to correctly evaluate your outdoor, and it's a really good point, Key. You know, we see that a lot where quarterbacks change teams and then they flourish. Look at Drew Brees, right? He was somewhat of a disappointment in, in uh, San Diego. He goes to New Orleans. Hall of Fame career, and we see that a lot around the league. Jimmy Garoppolo has gone on to take a team to the Super Bowl in San Francisco despite his struggles this year. So absolutely, you don't want to see a young quarterback leave your program and then go flourish someplace else. And I'm sure when Tennessee lost Mariota to the Raiders, I'm sure that was in their back of their mind. So I think if I'm the Jets and I have the first pick, I take Trevor Lawrence and I have to move on from Sam Darnold. Mm. Mike, uh, the Chargers continue to be the Chargers every single weekend it's painful to watch but how how impressive uh, how impressed were you by justin herbert jay it's the same guy i've been talking about for two years he's why i had him at the very top of the draft you know he's big he's strong he's tough he's smart people don't realize he looks like ben roethlisberger when you see him in person he is a big man who's really fast incredibly accurate Look, I, I thought in that last play, I, I thought they should have won the game. I thought he had enough control in the back of the end zone. That's pro football, though, guys. The margins are that small. And if I'm the Chargers next year, I kick everybody else out of the building. They're only allowed to draft offensive linemen. If I'm, if I'm the owner, if I'm the Spanos family, I know I got something special. I, drive, I draft seven, eight, nine offensive linemen. I solidify that position for years to come because if I can protect Justin Herbert with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, I am set. So the only thing I'd be worried about is he has he is a collision player. He's taking some big hits already. And for him to have sustainability, he's going to have to learn how to protect himself. You're talking about the Chargers next year. How about the Chargers next week? It's going to be Justin Herbert and the Chargers against Tua and the Dolphins. Drafted back-to-back, two of five, Herbert six, and they'll be on the same field in six days. Can't wait to see what the early returns are. Mike, thanks for joining us this morning. All right, thanks. I was prepared to talk about point guards with J-Will, by the way. If we're doing receivers with Key, I'm ready for point guards with J-Will. Don't, don't worry, Mike. December is right around the corner. That's when NBA season starts. We'll bring you on for some breakdowns, man. I'll be ready.